Hey guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to continue our conversation on trauma. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about relational trauma. And I brought this up a couple of times um, in the past. I'm going to post some of those videos down in the description box. And I'm going to um, pin a um, link and comment of mine um, to the comment section so that you can have that video. Um, I encourage you to go back and watch it. And I also um, will include a video that I did on narcissistic personality disorder and how narcissists attempt to destroy you when they can't control you. So um, I think the, the obvious benefits for you in this video is that you're going to be able to um, learn some tools um, on how to um, communicate and associate with somebody who's a narcissist. Um, I will say that, that there's very little hope for dealing with a narcissist. And, and one of the reasons I say that um, is because narcissists, they're interesting. <laughs> they're interesting. Um, they are created and they are created by experience. They are also created by biology and genes. So you have an, an interplay between genes and biology and also environment. And when you have those two things come together, um, and I may have said this in the previous video, it kind of causes this poisonous flower to bloom. So you bring the biology and the genes together with the environment, they fuse together and boom, here's a poisonous flower that appears one way on the outside. That's the flower part. They appear one way on the outside, but on the inside, there's nothing but poison. And so in this video, I wanna point out um, a couple of ways that you can deal with someone who's a narcissist. Um, in your life. There, there really is very little hope. One of the reasons is because um, a narcissistic personality cannot change, right? If you think of a personality, a personality is a set of characteristics that you were both born with and that you've acquired over time. And so when you think about a personality disorder, I want you to think of long-term, chronic, and pervasive. It's not something that you can counsel. It's not something that you can medi medicate, right? It's not something that can change overnight. Narcissism is a personality. And, you know, it kind of, you know how it is every day for you, right? Your personality kind of paints your reality. It paints your world. And so the same thing with a narcissist. A narcissistic personality kind of paints the world. It paints their worldview, the way they think, how they process things, how they perceive other people and other things in life. A narcissistic personality knows exactly what to do to get what they want. They become very, um, some of them are very vindictive, but they become very manipulative and they know how to do it. It's a skill. It's a personality trait. It's just like an artist, right? If you sit an artist down who, who wants to draw um, some kind of mural, mur however you say it, this has been a long day, so I apologize, um, or somebody who wants to go outside and like, you know, paint this big, wonderful portrait on a, on a, on a street wall, you know, a public wall. I look at some of the art that I walk by uh, in the downtown area of my state and I'm like, wow, how did they do this? Um, this is amazing, right? So you get an artist who is that wonderful, and then you sit me down who has absolutely no artistic ability, and you will begin to see that, wait a minute, this is part of his, this is part of his repertoire. This is part of his talent, part of his personality, part of his inner traits. And the reason I can make a stick figure is because I'm not an artist by trade. I'm not an artist by craft. I'm not an artist by personality. So when you think in terms of a narcissist, you want to think of personality characteristics that are hard to change as a part of who they are. So how does this relate to trauma? Well, one reason it relates to trauma is because if you're in a marriage or a long-term relationship with somebody who's a narcissist, you're going to find out that this person is typically abusive. They are either abusive subliminally or passively, or they are abusively aggressive. They are abusive, excuse me, aggressively. And what I mean by that is you might have a narcissist who is a passive aggressive communicator. So somebody who gives you the silent treatment, they stonewall you, um, they gaslight you. And I talk about these concepts on my channel. So I encourage you to go back to some videos where I'm talking about narcissism, borderline personality disorder. I give you um, an explanation of what those terms are. But a narcissistic personality who's passive aggressive, right? They stonewall you, they gaslight you, they minimize things, they're subliminally angry with you and displeased and you don't know why. They're 
they're not telling you anything, but you can sense this animosity between the two of you. Um, you also can sense that they are sneaking around you and having all these negative thoughts about you and they're manipulating you and they're, you know, violating your space and violating your heart and your mind. Um, so some narcissists communicate passive aggressively. Other narcissists um, communicate aggressively. They say what's on their mind. They're instantly quick tempered. They're instantly upset with you. They slam doors. They yell, scream. They do whatever they need to do to kind of make a scene, right? And kind of take the responsibility off of their chest and put it on to you. You're the problem. You're the reason. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done that, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of poison with somebody who's a narcissist. Um, and it's really hard to contain that poison once it's gotten out of control in your world. So let's go ahead and talk about some ways to deal with that. So let's say um, that you are traumatized because you have been hurt by this person, burned by this person. You can't trust them. They're not honest. They've hurt your heart. They've hurt your mind. They've hurt your soul. Um, and maybe even physically hurt you as well. So what do you do? So let's say you want to get rid of that relationship. So I have my list here and there's a couple of things I want to expound upon um, and give you some, some more in-depth uh, definitions. So what's the first thing I think that you should do is don't burn back. Okay, that's number one. That's what I have here on my list to share with you today is don't burn back. I know when a narcissist has burned you. I know when a narcissist has hurt you. You want to hurt back. We have an instant um, a tribal for example, or primitive, for example, um, natural innate tendency to want to bite back, hurt back, get our revenge. Don't do it. A narcissist knows how to up the ante. And a lot of narcissists are not only verbally skilled, but they are emotionally skilled. They're intelligent in terms of understanding what your reaction might be. So they've already pre planned how they're going to react to you. They've already thought out what they're going to do when you react a certain way, right? They also are, I don't want to say emotionally intelligent, but they know exactly how to get you where it hurts. Um, so if you attempt to burn back, you might just outplay yourself. If you attempt to burn back, you may create an even bigger dramatic situation for yourself. The best approach is to detach yourself from that situation and become the observer. Step out of yourself and become the observer. When you can step out of yourself and become the observer, you're better off. The moment you lose that observer lens, you lose your leg up right? You lose your authority in the situation. You lose your place and your stamina because you're trying to fight a fight with someone who's skilled at fighting. It's not worth it. Don't burn back. Step back. Let them entangle themselves in their own problem. Just you don't react and burn back. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I've been there. But you will see in the end, it's a good thing that you didn't burn back, okay? The next one is heal first, Heal first. Anytime you go up against a narcissist, you want to make sure that you heal yourself first. You don't want to act from the, pl the place or the position of hurt and pain and weakness and vulnerability. Because once you do, again, you're trying to burn them. Once you work from that position of vulnerability, hurt and pain, you're not going to make the best decisions. You're just going to want to fight back and hurt them back. So heal first. The first way to heal is to accept and recognize, or maybe it should be the opposite way, recognize and then accept what you're looking at. The narcissist is never going to change. More than likely, you're going to have to change and you're going to have to make some decisions. Do I want to stay here or do I want to go? Is this safe or is this not safe? Is this emotionally okay or not emotionally okay? Right? So, 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 so my suggestion to you is... Um, heal first and the first way to heal is to accept or recognize I'm sorry and then accept what you're looking at once you do that I encourage you to try to either get counseling or spiritual guidance you want somebody that's on the outside of the situation that says look this is what you're going through this is what you should do I know you're vulnerable right now and you can't make the best decision but here's what I think you should do right so that's healing recognizing and accepting and then going to somebody else with a more objective balanced view of the situation and then the third thing is allow yourself to process what you've gotten right what you've gotten from the balanced person what you've gotten from your own intuition just kind of again step out of yourself and become the observer the next thing is don't argue the details with a narcissist 
again, you're going to go around and around and around and around, and you're just going to want to burn them back. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a battle that you're going to win. It's a losing battle, right? So, so don't argue the details. Some narcissists, excuse me, kind of get you going by getting you kind of locked into this place of arguing the details. You don't need to argue the details, right? You know, an example of this might be, um, you know, let's say you and your husband go out to dinner um, or you and your wife go out to dinner and they say, you know what, honey, I, I just don't like that restaurant. I just feel uncomfortable and the food is bad and it's just not good. Okay, so let's say that that's what happens. Instead of, you know, you saying, oh, I totally, under I'm sorry, I'm a little bit distracted because I hear, I hear a client coming in. But um, let's say, you know, you start to say, well, you know, are you trying to say that I chose the wrong re restaurant or like, you know, what's going on here? And let's say your husband or your wife says, no, 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 I was just making a statement that, you know, um, I didn't really care for it there. But and then you get defensive and then you start saying, well, wait a minute. Remember that time when you did such and such when we went to a restaurant before? Remember last year on May 28th? when Right. So the other person, the wife or the husband is sitting there like I just made one statement and we're going like through this whole line of details you don't want to do that okay don't get engulfed in the details the narcissist may try to pull you into those details and go way back when you don't need to do that it's only making you emotionally vulnerable and more upset so when they do that like I told you earlier or suggested earlier step back come out of yourself and come out of that situation because it's a losing battle the next one is assert your boundaries a narcissist cares nothing about your boundaries they don't care they want what they want and they want it now so when you recognize that the best thing to do the best thing to do is to, again, step out of yourself, walk away, um, tell them that I'm not going to talk about this right now. I need to reassess my boundaries. I need to reassess my thoughts and my theories, right? I need to figure some things out. Um, okay. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. My camera was dying and I'm like, what's going on? I wanted to like hurry up and give you the rest of the tips, but I thought it didn't make sense. So I switched cameras. So if it looks different, I do apologize. But I think I was trying to explain assert your boundaries. When you assert your boundaries, you're saying to the narcissist, this is all I can do. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm stopping you right here. The moment that you reassert your boundaries, that's the moment you gain back your power. If you don't do that, the narcissist is just going to manipulate you and hurt you and harm you and, and try to get over on you emotionally if they can because they know that that's where most people are vulnerable. So assert your boundaries. The next one is emotionally detach and psychoanalyze. I said it earlier, step outside yourself, step back reassert your boundaries by emotionally detaching from the situation because the moment you get sucked into that emotional situation that's when the narcissist wins so you want to emotionally detach and then psychoanalyze the narcissist why are they doing this is there an internal reason why they're doing this are they acting this way out of insecurity are they acting this way because of envy like what's the issue here start to psychoanalyze i think we all have an innate ability to kind of psychoanalyze and process what might be going on with the other person. So just um, try your best, <laughs> I know it's hard, to emotionally detach and then psychoanalyze. The next one, guys, that I have on here is, is no relationship that puts you in a bind, right? Don't agree to a relationship that puts you in a bind. You may have feelings for the person, you may wanna pursue certain things, or you may have already been in a relationship with the person. Try your hardest not to get into a relationship where it puts you in a bind because a narcissist is very good at appearing like the best thing in the world at first once you get emotionally wrapped up with them and once your lives get intertwined together the narcissist can't lie forever so they end up showing you their true colors when that happens when that happens um the best thing to do is to say I need to reassert my boundaries right now. But but let's say you're thinking about a relationship with this person or there's something about them that strikes you as kind of odd, but you still like them, don't do it. Don't get into a relationship with someone who may be a narcissist. You're always going to lose. They're always gonna get you in a bind. They're gonna come back at you. They're gonna bite you somehow. Narcissists usually are the ones that take you to court for everything, <laughs> even if you are their spouse, and they wanna milk you for everything. Don't do it. Don't get into a bind with this person. Don't get into a relationship with them. I don't care how wonderful they seem. You have to 
balance your decisions with reality. So this person is so great here, but what's the opposite of their greatness that I'm attracted to? Something to keep in mind. The next thing is don't get entwined with them emotionally, financially. Um, don't become a business partner. Don't become an associate. Don't hook your accounts up nothing okay um don't get entwined with them it is not worth it um again narcissists are the ones who will take you to court for everything they're the ones who will try to sue you every time a shoe drops they're the ones who use up the legal system and um kind of manipulates the system and you in it uh they're the ones who will engage you in a messy divorce um, or a messy separation, um, just don't get entwined with them. That's my best advice to you. Last but not least, refrain from um, addressing every little thing with them. Narcissists throw whatever they can. It's like throwing something at the wall and hoping it sticks. Don't let them do that to you. Um, try your hardest to keep your boundaries, step out of yourself, right? Reassert your boundaries, show them what you're not going to tolerate, what you're not going to deal with, and um, go from there. Right. So refrain from responding to or reacting to um, every little thing that they do to you. Um, narcissists know how to poke you until you explode. Um, that gives them power. It also reinforces their desire to be superior. Uh, so the best thing to do is refrain from um, responding to every little thing that they do to you. All right, guys, thanks so much for being with me today. I apologize for having to cut the video in half. Um, but again, my camera was leaving, so I'm going to make sure that I gave you the rest of the details here. Thanks so much for watching the video. I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. And if you're not subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe. Then that way, um, when I post new videos, you'll get an alert and you can stay on top of videos like this. If you have a topic or something that you want me to discuss, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to consider it and put it on this channel. I'm open to these kind of things. We're going to continue our discussion of trauma. And we're going to be ending here in about a week on this particular topic and then we're going to start talking about something else. We're going to talk about emotionally detached and unhealthy parents and that's going to be a series too. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, take good care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.